The percent composition is defined as the percent calculated by using mass. So it's the percent by mass of each element in a compound. Could be used for a molecule or it could be used for an ionic compound. The formula for calculating percent composition is a little bit, it looks a little bit weird um, until you see it used in an example. So we're going to say if we wanted to calculate the percent of mass of atom X, whatever that atom might be, in order to calculate that percentage, we're going to determine the total mass of all the atoms X in whatever compound we're looking at. So total mass of all of the X atoms. And we're going to divide that by the molecular mass of the whole entire compound. And then in order to make it a percent, we just have to simply multiply by 100. And that turns it into a percentage. Now, again, like I said, it's kind of weird when you look at it in, in a formula, but when you see it used in an example, you'll see that this is quite simple. So we're going to do a sample problem. What is the percent carbon and percent hydrogen for the compound CH4? So when we're thinking about it in the context of a particular molecule, the percent of carbon so this is saying the percent of atom X is going to be equal to the mass of all the carbon in CH4 divided by the, the molecular mass of CH4, the whole entire thing, multiplied by 100. And then similar, the percent hydrogen is going to be the mass of all of the hydrogen in the CH4 compound divided by the mass of the CH4 and again multiplying it by 100. And um, when you're calculating the percent mass for every single type of element in a compound, like we're doing in this case, we're calculating for carbon and for hydrogen, we should be accounting for 100% of the mass. So whatever these two numbers are, they should add up to 100. So let's actually work this out for both of these. The mass of the carbon atoms in CH4, we have to take into consideration how many carbon atoms we have. So in this particular situation, we only have one. And also how much that carbon weighs. So going back to the periodic table, finding carbon and looking at its atomic mass, 12.001, one times 12.001. Uh, AMUs, whatever unit you are, or grams per mole, whatever unit you want to use. And then we're going to divide that by the molecular mass of CH4. So let's go figure that molecular mass out. We'll actually use the space here to calculate the molecular mass of CH4. We have one carbon atom, and we just said that carbon atoms weigh 12.011. We have a total of four hydrogen atoms, and each hydrogen is 1.008. And so let's just work that math out. Let's be really careful. A lot of times I personally do a lot of rounding when I'm doing um, molecular weights, molecular masses. But let's just let all these sig figs be accounted for. Oops, 12.011. So we have a mass here, uh, a molar mass or molecular mass of 16.043. Again, this is going to be AMUs or grams per mole, whichever unit you're using. So let's um, take this number back to the problem that we're working on, 16.043. And we'll stick that down here, 16... 0.043, and we'll go ahead and, and work this math out. 12.001 divided by 16.043. We have to multiply by 100. And 
This is 74 point, we'll just say 74.81%. Technically we say 74.81% carbon because we're talking about the carbon atoms. So now let's go down here for hydrogen. We're gonna do the same type of thing. We wanna calculate the mass of all of the hydrogen in carbon. So we have four total hydrogen atoms, and each one of those hydrogen atoms weighs, what did we say, 1.008 AMUs. So four times 1.008 AMUs. And then we're gonna divide by the mass, the molar mass of CH4, 16.043 multiply by 100. Now maybe if you're really clever with math, you might be saying, can't you just take 100 and subtract 74.81? And you should be able to. It should work. Actually working the math out for both of these is just a way of you know double checking your answer. So four times 1.008 is 4.032 divided by 16.043 and multiply by 100 and we get 25.13% hydrogen. So that doesn't work out to be exactly 100 when we add it together, let's see how far off we are. 75.81 plus 25.13, we're very close to 100. And the reason that it's not quite perfectly exact is because even these numbers that we're using off the periodic table have been rounded a bit. So what we're seeing is just a little bit of rounding error, but it's so close to 100 that we feel confident that this is correct. And that is how you would solve a percent composition problem.